Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. I'm Polina Ionina, the Community Manager at iSpring, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. And as a topic, we decided to choose a very specific one, and during today's session, we will be talking about staff turnover in manufacturing and how you can reduce it possibly with e-learning tools and solutions. We're going to talk about challenges that usually come up in this industry and how a lot of companies from manufacturing, including our clients, were able to overcome them with e-learning. And as a presenter, I have invited my colleague from Customer Success Department, Pauline Igoshina. Hey Pauline, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, Polina. Thank you so much for inviting me today to cover this very interesting topic. And I hope mm -hmm. our attendees will enjoy it. Awesome. I hope so too. Thank you, Polina. So, hi everyone. My name is Pauline and I'm happy to see all of you here today. And let me start right off with the agenda of today's session. So, today we will talk about specific challenges of the onboarding process in manufacturing. We will analyze how e-learning can address each of those challenges. We will discuss how to automate the onboarding process with e-learning tools using actual case studies. We will talk about staff resistance to new work dynamics and how to reduce it. And of course, we will demonstrate how an effective approach can reduce staff turnover, saving organization time and money. At the end, we will have a Q&A session to take care of any questions you may have. And today's webinar is based on our experience working with clients in the manufacturing industry and seeing how we were able to successfully reduce turnover rates and decrease accompanying costs. According to research data, turnover is highest during the onboarding stage. That is why for today's webinar, we will be focusing on onboarding. Let's start by defining onboarding. Onboarding is the process of integrating a new employee into the new work environment. It has two main goals. Teach employees the necessary skills, knowledge and behaviors and encourage socialization and make new hires feel welcome and valued. Now, the question is, what should be included in the new employee onboarding to not only reach those two goals, but also revamp the onboarding to keep employees from leaving the organization during the probation period? There is no universal answer to that question. It will vary between different organizations, industries and their unique business processes. We'll take a look at how onboarding works in manufacturing companies and what can be improved. There are of course some guidelines that are applicable to most organizations. According to the Society for Human Resource Management, successful onboarding programs must include the four C's, which stand for compliance, teaching new hires the basic company policies, clarification, ensuring that employees are aware of their responsibilities and how to fulfill their role correctly, culture, providing the formal and informal norms of the organization, and connection, building relationships with colleagues and feeling like a part of a team. With those four principles in mind, you can start creating your onboarding plan. But it's not entirely easy. There are certain challenges that training and development specialists and HR managers face than developing onboarding process. Specifically, those that our clients in the manufacturing industry have encountered. First, let's take a look at manufacturing companies' life cycle to see there where onboarding processes come in. As in many other industries, manufacturing companies grew through, go for certain growth stages, similar to people. They go from a birth, startup, 
to childhood and young adulthood, their growth, the enterprise stage of maturity and decline. Onboarding appears at the very early stages of the company's growth, but there are not many policies and processes for a new employee to learn. Thus, all training is handled by a limited group of people who pass knowledge directly to the new hire. However, when a company starts growing, the owners start to ask for tangible results. And new hires are being brought in to form teams that will cover growing business needs. At this stage, turnover rates become really high and lead to extra expenses. According to our clients in the manufacturing industry, at least 18% of newcomers leave the company during the probation period. And since the cost of replacing an employee is from 90 to 200% of their annual salary, employee turnover brings significant expenses along with it. So why does it happen? When a company is in early development stages, all training is spontaneous rather than systematic. New hires learning during the work process and are not provided with clear instructions or guidelines. They are on their own for the most part, which can lead them to feeling left out and leaving the company during the first six months. The lack of formal and automated onboarding in this stage becomes more noticeable. E-learning tools and more specifically learning management systems can change that. Our clients created onboarding programs that are separated into different stages and covered an introduction to the company, job description, and video tours around facilities. The onboarding program is automatically assigned to a new person on their first day. They know what they have to do, how much time each course will take, and their deadlines. They also added surveys to collect employees' feedback on the training process and personal progress. Surveys can help build communication between employees and employers from the very beginning, during the first onboarding courses that an employee takes. Implementing e-learning to automate onboarding is a great way to improve the situation. But then our clients had just started to develop their onboarding, and before we switched to e-learning as their solution, it was not that easy. So let's take a look at the challenges our clients faced than developing their first adaptation plan. The first challenge in onboarding employees in the manufacturing industry is that there are higher risks and fatal consequences for mistakes. In businesses like retail or sales, the cost of mistakes is not so high. They can represent the loss of a client or a missed profit opportunity. But in manufacturing, the cost of mistake can be as high as human health or even loss of life. When an intern starts using unfamiliar equipment or enters a new workspace, it is extremely important to prepare them in advance provide safety guidelines, instructions, and make sure they memorize them before getting started. And then comes the second challenge. On-the-job training is risky, but in manufacturing, it is hard to make training strictly theoretical and blended approach is needed. There are a lot of hard skills to learn, so training at the job site is still extremely important. Based on our client's input, the goal of training and development was to make training more systematic and controllable, and uh, at the same time keeping it relevant and focused on day-to-day -day tasks that the new hire will be performing. So theoretical and practical training had to be combined for the best results. The next challenge what was that uh, we identified was that the discrepancy between the employee's initial results and the training expectations appeared. Let me give me an example. If you ask an engineer to develop a car design, one person makes it compact, these two doors and a small trunk. But another person makes it a huge Jeep with four doors and plenty of space for luggage. And they both will be right because the task was to design a car. But the result that the mentor expected might have been something else entirely. 
This represents the gap between expectations and results. New employees can't guess what their supervisor expects to see. So when they're asked to do something, they will try to do it the way they know how, or the way they were trained in the previous job. If you give them a clear picture of what is expected of them and what the supervisor wants to see as an outcome, it can reduce overall training time by up to 10%. And now challenge number four. According to our clients, the best way to clarify the expected results and how the processes should be conducted is to develop formal documentation. The most of the materials that they had developed they're in the plain text format, and they're not ready to be turned into actual training. Because in the manufacturing industry, the safety of the staff and the quality of a product depends on accuracy, formal documents with folders and folders of paperwork, describing each little detail of a particular role, job description, task, and of course, expected results. Employees have to physically grow through pages and pages of information written in a formal, hard to comprehend language, which makes it extremely difficult to engage learners in the training process and learners start to lose interest and can miss crucial information, which again can lead to fatal mistakes. And even if you wrote down all the instructions and handed them out to new employees to read, and they follow some formal onboarding plan, how do you track their progress and measure the effectiveness of a training? The final challenge that they have singled out is a lack of comprehensive and objective tracking tools. First, our clients needed to confirm that a person actually read the materials. Then supervisors and mentors have to somehow measure employees' understanding of the materials they read or practical exercises they completed. Do we have to ask them questions in person or grade paper tests? Watch over their shoulder than their reading to make sure they don't skip anything. In our client's case, they had to do precisely that and dedicate a full work day, eight hours, to a personal meeting at the end of the onboarding program to discuss any questions and make final assessments. So when a manufacturing company grows, uh, it needs to introduce a formal and automated onboarding for their employees uh, in order to manage turnover, increase staff efficiency, and reduce training time and expenses. And what can manufacturing companies do to automate the onboarding? Our clients usually find their solution in e-learning. E-learning can significantly improve training and onboarding processes and, of course, put this process on autopilot. E-learning solutions can help with developing the training content, providing it to new employees, and tracking their progress. To launch e-learning in your company, you need just two components, an offering tool for content creation and a learning management system. Now, let's take a look at the specific challenges that we covered earlier, one by one, and see how e-learning can help overcome each of them. So, the first challenge was that mistakes in training can lead to risk in the health and safety of a new hire. And our solution is simple. First, we can design a course on hygiene and safety, then upload it to the LMS and assign it to our learners before they start performing their tasks. At the end of the training, they will have to take a test to confirm the understanding of a topic. They will only be allowed to work with the equipment under matter supervision after completing the test. And according to our clients, this helped them to reduce accidents by 50%. The second challenge was that it's hard to make training strictly theoretical and a blended approach is required. It is super easy to accomplish this through e-learning. They can schedule online and class sessions through the LMS. Our learner will first read about the process, watch a tutorial, go through a self-check, and only then they will have a good knowledge and a starting point from which to start performing this task in real life with a supervisor.
Then next challenge was the gap between employer expectations and employee performance, which increased training time and led to poor results. How can the learning be helpful in this case? General guidelines and instructions can be stored in the knowledge base that employees can access 24 seven. They can refer to it if any questions come up or if they need to review a certain document to know what is expected from them in a particular task. The next challenge is lack of interactive training materials. And a lot of you guys voted for it as like a main challenge. So what e-learning can offer? With the help of an offering tool, formal documentation can be converted to e-learning courses that are visually appealing to learners. And why is this important? According to studies, approximately 65% of people are visual learners. And adding visual instruction to written text can increase the effectiveness of training by 40%. Just reading something doesn't guarantee an understanding of a topic. Visualization of contents help increase understanding and improves the retention of the data. It is very important for manufacturers to use those visual tools because a lot of learning materials are documents and processes are described for plain text. Our clients used an offering tool to turn the paper-based reading materials into easy to follow interactive courses, how-to videos, and online quizzes. And the last challenge, uh, lack of tracking tools and ways to measure employees' progress. LMS platforms provide online reporting. Mentors can see how their group of trainees is performing on certain courses, how much time they spend studying, and of course, if there are any issues, they will be able to identify them in a timely manner. In a client's case, they had one training and development manager responsible for 50 learners at the time. But all of them felt supported and knew that they could ask her any questions because she knows how to help. And she would go to her report dashboard every day and examine the overall progress of her group of students and could find any gaps easily. Now, how do you convince people about something new as e-learning um, that is yet unknown? Our clients introduced a differentiating type of approach to mentoring that helps with solving particular tasks that each group of employees has. Three main categories were created. TWI job instruction for line employees, mentoring for middle management, and budding for top management. There is also a challenge to inspire people to follow one corporate set of rules and, most importantly, a sort of cultural code that exists only within a company. Let's see in more detail how the above-mentioned categories of mentoring work and how they help to motivate people. The TVI, TWI job instruction or training within industry uh, is for people working in the field. A professional worker helps a new employee on the job by following four steps. Step one is to present the operation to the new employee. Step two, introduce a clear set of actions for an operation to the new employee, emphasizing each step. Step three, repeat, stressing the key points of each step. And step four, repeat again, stressing key points and explaining reasons for each of them and what happens if they are performed incorrectly. Our clients also use guidelines that they call a roadmap for step-by-step -step operation completion. Those guidelines help employees keep those instructions at hand because the roadmaps are uploaded to an LMS and assigned as a theoretical content before an operation. The next type of uh, mentoring is mentoring. The main difference between mentoring and training within industry is that mentoring doesn't only include hard skills training. A mentor needs to give his mentee a set of coaching techniques so that the latter will be able to analyze the man challenge and understand how they can solve it. For the budding, the main challenge here is to integrate a new top manager in the corporate culture. 
His mentor, or buddy, uses full lunch breaks method to smooth the transition to a new company and to explain and integrate a new top manager to the company's ecosystem. After differentiating people into groups, our clients decided to create an onboarding plan. But we still encountered some resistance from the employees. Of course, the main motivational factor for the first two groups would be financial. But our clients also think that it's important to not only introduce KPIs, but for the top level to use the budding technique, as it's a great way to make an employee feel that they belong to a group which is a crucial factor in building a successful corporate culture. Now, we talked about different onboarding challenges like turnover, lack of tracking tools, and employee resistance. Now it's time for us to show you how this can be solved in practice. So if you decide to use e-learning to revamp your onboarding process, you'll need an offering tool and an LMS. An e-learning offering tool is a type of software that allows you to create digital training content, convert it into an e-learning format, and distribute it among learners via e-learning management system. And the learning management system is a platform for managing digital learning contents. Here at iSpring, we develop and offer both an offering tool and an LMS. They work perfectly together as a complete solution to launch e-learning in your organization quickly. So on this slide, you can see that companies that we already work with, uh, companies from manufacturing industry. And if you would like to see some of the case studies from them, how they already use iSpring to implement their e-learning, uh, we have them on our website. And Paulina can share a link with you in the chat if you're interested. So just let us know. Now, I will show you how you can implement your onboarding program using iSpring's e-learning software. The iSpring Suite offering tool is a PowerPoint-based add-in for creating interactive e-learning content. It has several tools for building courses with quizzes, dialogue simulations, interactions, and more. So now let me show you what type of content you can start creating today using the iSpring Suite offering tool. I will start this an interaction. So let me close this presentation and I will open the interaction. Just give me one moment. Okay, so here we have an interaction. Uh, interaction can help you present information in a more engaging format and make your content more visual. So this interaction here shows that components of a puncture and learners can click on labels to uh, see the names of the different parts of the tool and to learn more about it. And there I have just the names of the components, but you can add full descriptions, use methods in each little window or even include a video tutorial on each little window. In the interaction, learners can navigate using the labels right here or using the buttons in the player. So that looks pretty cool, right? But I wanted to share another great example with you. So uh, here I have a quiz on the first aid. So let me start from the beginning. And quizzes are great for testing your learner's knowledge. You can create self-checks or create strict exams. So this one is a timed exam. As you can see, there is a timer at the top of a quiz showing how much time do I have to answer the question. Uh, so let's give it a try. Choose the first uh, answer and click Submit. And there is also a customizable feedback that will appear after each question. Some Customers use it for just providing, uh, giving an answer, okay, you've done a great job, or the answer was wrong. But you can also create full, um, additional, full additional content into these little feedback windows to explain how we should have handled the question and give some extra details. Um, so let me have a look at some other questions that we have here. So the next question is a sequence type question. Uh, here the learner have to drag the answers and put them in the correct order. 
Okay, so here we have an incorrect answer. And if I close the feedback, I can actually see what, the, what was the correct uh, order for this slide. Uh, let me try the next question. So true or false? Okay, perfect. Now we have, uh, again, the multiple choice question. And in the iSpring quiz maker, we have 14 types of interactive templates that you can use for building your quizzes. So we already have seen a multiple choice, true or false, the sequence question. So uh, let me just uh, answer them quickly and see what else do we have here. So this one is a typing question. So I type in it the number. Okay, that's correct. Then let's try this one. And um, I'm just keeping through these questions because uh, I wanted to show you some other types. Okay, here we have um, multiple response questions. So here I can click on several um, boxes and submit my answer. And another great way uh, thing about the quizzes is that they have a question list. So the learner can go back and see which uh, questions were already answered and see which ones are still there to answer and also see the number of points awarded for each uh, question. And in this uh, quiz, I have restricted navigation. So even though I have this question list, I cannot skip to the next one. So we'll have to go through them one by one. But if you have a self-check or a survey, you can, of course, disable this feature and allow learners to take quizzes and uh, choose the questions they want. So I'm not going to finish this quiz uh, because I want to show you something else. Uh, I actually wanted to show you a full course on fire safety. This course is already uploaded into the LMS and it combines various forms of e-learning, like interactions, quizzes, so everything that we've seen before, but this time together. Uh, so here I'm in my user portal and I will select my learning module on fire safety. Okay, I'm very sorry for that. <laughs> the connection is a bit weak. So let me switch to the iSprint speed and show it in the preview mode. So here I have my course actually opened in the PowerPoint so you can see how it will look from the uh, point of view of the author who is creating the course. And I can also preview this to see how it will look uh, from the user point of view. So just give it a few seconds to convert all the interactive elements that they have because in this presentation, I have quite a lot of images and also interaction and a quiz. So just... We didn't mean to do that, but now <laughs> you get to see how the publishing process with iSpring works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And while we're doing that, uh, guys, if you have any questions, you can leave them in a chat box for the Q&A session. So we will happy, we'll be happy to cover them. Okay, I think my course is now uploaded and I have my course on fire safety in the preview mode. So here you have an interactive player that learners can use to go through the questions. There's also an outline at the end and you can customize the look and feel of this player. You can add a presenter video, you can add a company logo. Uh, you can use uh, this scroll bar if you have any audio support or video so the learner can skip through it or like go to the moment that they didn't understand in the beginning. And now in this presentation, they have the steps and then the interaction. So it's a pretty short one on the types of fire extinguishers. And lastly, we have a quiz. Uh, we have first a sequence question that we've seen in a first aid quiz before. So let's try. Okay. So <laughs> it, was it was a mistake, but here in the custom feedback, you can actually see the correct order. So instead of just uh, giving an answer that it's wrong, we can um, follow the correct order. And next time we take this quiz, we know what to do. Then the second one is a hotspot question. And it's really great because it makes your content more visual again. And we remember how important the visual content is for the training. So the question here is to identify and mark fire safety rules violations. And there, there are some boxes blocking the um, emergency exit. So if I click on it and or like try something else, 
Let's see. Okay, that's the right answer. And lastly, here we have a drag and drop question, which is my personal favorite because you can create mini games with it. You can create like very interesting types of questions. So here I, I need to douse uh, a computer and I need to choose the correct uh, item to do that. So we have a vase and we also have a fire extinguisher. Uh, let's try this one. Okay, I think that was a correct answer. So now we have a slide at the end that shows you the result. And if you'd like, you can customize it further. You can add a detailed report. You can ask the, you can allow user to print out the results. Uh, so all of this can be uh, customized when you create a new content. And if you're interested, we have like full webinars on building quizzes with iSpring, building your e-learning courses with iSpring. So uh, just let us know in the comments if you'd like to see some of them. So now I'm going to close uh, my courses here and we'll go back to the presentation. Okay, just give me one second. Okay, uh, we already talked about LMSs, but besides basic LMS features, iSpring Learn will be especially helpful for those of you who work in manufacturing. And why is that? Uh, because as you can see, we understand what the main challenges are and we also understand how to overcome them. And uh, with Icepreneur LMS, you can create an onboarding once and automatically assign it to all new employees. Uh, in our case, client had three main modules in their onboarding program, the company introduction, the department introduction and job introduction. And each part had its own chapters, so there on the slide, you can see an example of a learning track like that. They also needed to share that program with the workers without having to assign content to a new employee every time. Uh, with iSpring Learn, you just need to create a program once and the system will assign it to all employees automatically. So you don't have to worry about somebody missing important information. The next one, this iSpring Learn LMS creating onboarding progress uh, can require, um, sorry, <laughs> this iSpring Learn LMS, you can avoid a lot of extra paperwork that uh, sometimes comes, then you have to create onboarding programs. And you can easily transform your existing onboarding materials into a learning track that you can assign to all new employees. You can also decide whether you need them to complete the parts in a free manner, sequentially, or if you want to set deadlines for that. And that's it. Uh, there are even more helpful aspects here. Catalog, for instance, they can store additional content and knowledge base, a repository for your handbooks, guidelines, and even instructions. Sometimes you can't avoid the need to conduct face-to-face -face training, but sometimes you can. We all know how time and money consuming those are, so here's what they suggest. Change welcome training to an interactive online course. The same can be done with health and safety classes or compliance training. Make them engaging and exciting by transforming them into e-learning content. And you already seen that with iSprint Suite, you can easily transform your existing presentation into e-learning course, and it will help to make it more interactive. Uh, the next step, set notifications. iSpring Learn will always support your users and will remind them if they have a due date for a course. And the last step, send results to administrators. Once your course is completed, administrators or country managers, for example, can easily follow up on that and make corrections. They can also open detailed reports to make sure their employees are studying well and not skipping anything. Now, remember it's proven that if an employee has thoughts on leaving during the first three weeks on the job, it is likely that they're planning to leave during the first year. The big question is how to deal with that. We have some answers. So you can create online surveys. Testing employees' knowledge is important and we all know that. But there is something even more important that somehow isn't mentioned that much. Remember how we talked about people often feeling lonely at a new job? You can keep track of that. This iSpring suite, you can create online surveys and quizzes to monitor employees' mental state. 
just run reports on their answers and see if something they answer ends up in the risk zone. It's the easiest way to prevent burnout. And since we're talking about how crucial it is for your employees to not feel like they've been left alone, we need to mention an hour way to avoid the feeling and save time. Create an online meeting with webinar function integrated into the Icepreneur platform. All you need to do is invite an employee, their mentor or a supervisor, and this way you will reduce precious working time to just a one hour meeting. And talking about saving time, imagine what a nightmare it is to try to find all the handbooks, regulation forms, and other documents that you need to read on your first day of job. It is much easier to have them on hand, always, even on your mobile phone. This Icepreneur and the Icepreneur app, everything becomes possible. And if your employee needs to review a document that they need is their mobile phone, that's it. Okay, you might say, cool, we got it. But what about practice? How can I see that my worker didn't mess it up? Our answer is open assignments. Before handling a practical task, make sure you create a clear open assignment for them. Assignments can have detailed instructions and employee responses can contain images and videos. So be careful when writing instructions Attach a document, this step-by-step -step guide. Remember, your workers can access everything with their phone and see the results. So to sum up, we saw that an effective approach can reduce staff turnover, saving organization time and money. And if you go back to our previous example, our client's case, Nine, nine months after moving their training online, they saved over $5,000 each month and over 1,000 hours of work. But most importantly, the turnover rate or churn rate was reduced from 18% to zero and onboarding time was reduced by 10%. So if you want to put your onboarding on autopilot and make sure that from the first day at work, New employees can take online courses to dive into corporate culture, learn basic safety concepts and rules for using the equipment, and most importantly, feel like you've got them covered, then follow the steps that were provided. And if you'd like to achieve the same results as our clients in no time, I suggest booking a meeting. Please leave us a message in the comments section so we can get in touch or you can send an email to sales at icepring.com so one of our e-learning experts will contact you in no time. During the meeting, uh, we can go over your specific case and set a clear strategy so you can achieve better results in the shortest period of time. Uh, I will also share a checklist with you so you never get lost and always have a clear set of actions. This checklist was designed and tailored specifically for manufacturing companies and a case of turnover reduction. So thank you so much for being here today. And now I will be answering the questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Pauline. Everyone, we are ready to start our Q&A session and I know that some of you need to run so please as soon as you get a log off of this webinar uh, could you please uh, fill out a quick survey to let us know how you like this session and if it was relevant to you so that we can provide better content to you in the future. Okay so at this point I think we are more than ready to begin our Q&A session. So Pauline, how to track results if we have several departments? So the, to track your results in the LMS uh, for different departments, we recommend separating your employees into different groups. And in Icepreneur LMS, for example, you can set up a report for a specific department or group of learners. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And Jeff is interested if you could please better explain the numbers on the last slide a bit more detail. 
Yeah, sure. Thank you, Jeff, for your question. So in our client's case, uh, they were going from like no onboarding, no e-learning to implementing the e-learning solution. And the $5,000 that they were saving, uh, it was saving on the traveling costs and also the saving on the employee's salary. Uh, so the trainers, we don't, uh, we won't have to travel as much to uh, introduce onboarding to their new employees. And also the salary that you pay for a new hire who doesn't leave the company, <laughs> it stays in the company. So uh, you're not losing people and they bring benefit to your company in the future. For the hours of work, uh, also the online trainings can reduce the cost for, um, actually not, not reduce the cost, but reduce the time for the trainees and trainers. Uh, if you have to pass the information in person, it can take a lot of time, but if the employee is prepared in advance, if they had a look at the online program, they read the materials uh, beforehand, uh, the, like, the sessions between the trainee and the trainer, they are reduced. So we just uh, dis discuss the questions, the specific ones that employee didn't get after completing the training. So there are a lot of benefits there. And for the turnover rates, I think it's pretty explanatory. So uh, they don't have, like, so now people don't leave the company during the probation period at all because the onboarding program that was introduced, it's really uh, relevant to them and people are feeling that they want to stay in the company that is welcoming them. And the last one uh, is once again uh, tied to the second points of the hours of work and also the adaptation period itself is now goes quicker uh, because the less time is taken from the supervisor and learners can even take some of the courses offline if they're at home uh, using their mobile devices or taking training uh, like in their computers. So, um, like it kind of helps you to reduce the overall uh, adaptation period. Uh, I hope I answered your question, but once again, this is a specific case for a specific customer. Uh, when we worked with you, we can uh, see how iSpring can help you to reduce these numbers in your uh, organization. So if you're interested, you can contact us and we will be happy to help. Thank you so much, Pauline. And another question, do you recommend to insert videos in course to help new employees integration before going live on the production line? So that's actually a great question. And uh, the customer uh, that provided their case study for this webinar, they were introducing the video tutorials for some of the uh, courses. So uh, like working the some equipment, for working with some online programs, if they have to fill in a documentation, they had a video tutorial on how to do that. For practical tasks, they were combining the video tutorial with a live session with a mentor. So after watching the tutorial, they would go to the actual like plant or the actual uh, workstation and go through a process together with a supervisor. But supervisor didn't have to show it all from the beginning because employee already seen it in the video and they can already uh, perform certain tasks and uh, like get a feedback. All right, thank you so much. I hope that answers your question. And it looks like at this point we do not had, have any other questions. Okay, thank you very much everyone for being so active, for sending in your questions, for participating in the polls and for your requests in the further information. Again, thanks to you, Pauline, for this presentation. And I think we can wrap up our webinar. I would like to ask everyone to fill out a quick survey to let us know how you liked this session. And I hope to see you at the next session. I wish everyone a lovely day. Bye, everybody, and bye, Pauline. Thank you, Paulina. Bye, everyone.